anyways. No, you can't do it here. Okay. What lies at the heart of uh, television storytelling in particular is the same kind of ability to build sequences that movie directors use. It's not going to make sense. The story is not going to make sense to viewers unless it unfolds with a visual narrative. Movie directors call it coverage. In television, we call it sequencing. She also finds A television sequence is a series of connected images, pictures that show a variety of views of an unfolding action in an order that makes sense to the viewer. It is satisfying to talk to other people. Go ahead. As television viewers, we tend to take sequences for granted. As shooters, we have to make sure to bring back pictures from the field that can be edited together in a way that audiences can clearly follow the action. Got it. Will you just get out of frame again, please? please? Uh, I didn't have a clean frame, thank you. And now, yeah. Anytime. Sequencing is visual storytelling. That means shooting a variety of related pictures. You may not use all the pictures in editing, but if shot properly, they can be cut together seamlessly okay, so to appear I'm as one continuous unfolding action. Okay. Anytime. Okay. Can I have some and there you go, yep. So don't forget to give it to him. Okay, do it all in one motion, all in one motion. Do it again, and just this take, time give it to him. Just take some off, just take some off. You know, just, yeah. yeah, and just, because it hasn't gone anywhere. Go. Thank you. Okay, now. Doing, just repeat what you did, just pretend that you're doing it, okay? Okay, Bruce, now you pretend you're receiving it again. Okay, and then exit that way, okay, Bruce? Anytime. There you go. Thank you. Here are some things to think about when you're shooting for visual storytelling. Get an establishing shot. This sets the scene and lets viewers know where they are. No matter how small the action is that you're shooting, have participants repeat that action several times so that you can shoot it from a variety of angles and with different shot sizes. Whenever possible, include entrances and exits in your shots. Start clean and end clean. Once the subject has left the frame, the editor can cut to almost anything. Screen direction. Make sure the direction people are moving and looking is consistent from shot to shot within a sequence. Here's the trick. Imagine a line going right through the action in the direction of motion. Or think of the direction people are looking as an eye line. This is called the axis. Be sure to stay on one side of the axis to shoot for different shot sizes. Now the screen direction of your shots will match.
When you cut together shots from opposite sides of the axis, your shots won't match, and the audience will be momentarily confused. If you do have to cross the axis, you can really help out the editor by getting some neutral shots, shots taken from in front or directly behind the action. Neutral shots make the crossing of the axis less disturbing for the audience. Don't forget close-ups and cutaways. Cutaways are shots away from the main action. Get close-ups of faces, people watching, something that has been established in an earlier shot as part of the action. Cutaways are great for time management. When watching a cutaway, the audience doesn't see how far the action is advancing. So if a sequence needs to be shortened, the editor can cut back to the action when it's almost over. And for a sequence ending, be sure to get a shot that says, this sequence is over. Do it here. Okay. That's good. Okay, so we'll get some shots of the building now. When shooting for visual storytelling, the objective is to shoot sequences in a way that audiences can clearly follow the action. You ready? Camera okay, rolling. But as Janice Neal observes, directing that action for the camera sometimes presents a challenge to inexperienced shooters. It's very difficult for students to kind of wade in and to take charge. The students are very timid of kind of taking the situation and saying, you know, um, after doing an interview, for instance, of uh, saying, you know, you were great. When we talked on the phone, we did, we talked about this and this and this. I don't think that came across today. Can we talk about that again in redoing an interview, for instance? Uh, or when you're trying to, you know, set up a, set up a sequence of a person's um, walking into a room, walking over to their desk, picking up the phone, and, and uh, they're very conscious of the camera being there. It's difficult for the student to say, you know, can we try that again? You know, I know you want to look your best on camera. And they find it, and they do find it very, very difficult to, to, um, to kind of 
take control and, and direct the person. <laughs> I hit the camera and it knocked. So can I just get you to do that again? Okay. That was perfect. Thanks, That's Lisa. exactly what we want. For their profile of weightlifter and trainer Lisa Regan, Karen and Melanie put together some good sequences when they were able to control and direct the action. Once inside the Ottawa Athletic Club, Lisa's carefully structured coaching and training sessions unfolded the way actuality does with a rhythm of its own. There was little opportunity for the crew to intervene and direct events for the camera. Can you hear it good? Yeah. What's the sound of it? Like, just make sure The shoot was pretty tough because they were moving so quickly. Even though they were doing the same kind of sets every time, you'd, you'd want to get a different angle to have a fresh idea or fresh perspective. But it just, they went so fast that I was like, oh my goodness, and we had no light set up, so it was pretty dark. And so I'm worried about this, and the sun's going down, and there's a lot of stuff to think about. When you first arrive on location, don't start shooting right away. Just watch for a while. Check out how the action unfolds. Make a mental shot list. The different shots you need to put sequences together. You're editing in your head now. Try to get a sense of how the participants move, how an action begins, and how it completes. When you've observed the action, you can anticipate it. You'll know where to place the camera to capture different shot sizes, entrances, and exits. Be sure to hold your shots long enough. Keep shooting until you've captured a completed action. When the adrenaline gets pumping under hectic shooting conditions, you can sometimes find yourself back in the edit suite with shots no longer than four or five seconds. Hold your shots at least 10 seconds. Stay away from unmotivated zooms and pans. They eat up a lot of screen time. Often a cut works better than a camera move. And if you don't hold your shots at the beginning and at the end of a camera move, your editing could look like this. Editors will love it if you bring back a lot of static shots pictures without camera movement shot from a tripod. If you have to go handheld to keep up with the action, look for a stable surface to shoot from. When shooting handheld, stay on a wide lens. You get your most stable shots when you're zoomed out all the way. For close-ups and different shot sizes, don't zoom in. Walk in and keep the lens on a wide angle, zoomed all the way out. If you try to shoot handheld on a long lens, zoomed in, all you get is wobbly scope. When shooting on a long lens, you should be on a tripod.
just think if you try something, you might as well give it your all. Don't forget about audio. Before you begin to shoot a new activity, check your sound levels. Do it to the best of your ability. Why do it at all? Up on the, yeah, the um, platform, too. Looks like we go in a rotation. Shoot conversations the way you would, a sequence. Get a variety of shot sizes, over the shoulder, and listening shots. And listen on your headsets to what's being said. Hold your shots long enough until you record a complete sound bite. Two cleans and then a jerk. No, I'm sorry, three cleans and then a jerk for two sets. And then for two sets, I'm going to do two cleans and a jerk. I mean, I'll go up and wait. So how much of a break do you take between sets? Three or four minutes. Okay, so it's time for me to move. Yeah. <laughs> Even though you're very busy thinking about how to put sequences together, don't miss opportunities to capture natural sound bites. Because you do this like this is a bodybuilding exercise, so? and then you go to the platform, you're going to forget. Right? No, the Especially a profile like oh, that, where you're awesome. dealing with a character and you want to tell more about the person, you want to get a sense of who the person is. So, by telling how they interact with other people, you're also telling a story about that person. So, it would make a lot of sense to obviously tell you know, that side of the story, not just all these shots of her on her own. I recognize that I'm um, probably about part way through. It was pointed out to me. They tell students, look, I, I've been here. I've, uh, I've uh, seen you, you know, talking to your coach, for instance. Um, and I've seen him showing you how to, you know, improve your, your, your weightlifting. Whatever it was that they saw, they, they saw the two of them doing. Can, I want to get sense of that. I want to capture that on TV. Can you do that again? So you're, so you're kind of coaching. Um, your, your interview ch subject and, and maybe somebody else to, to do something. You're not asking them to do something that they wouldn't have done before. You're asking them just to do it at that moment for you because you, you have to capture it in the right lighting conditions and all the rest of it while you're, while you're there. Uh, but it is, you know, trying as much as possible to reflect reality as you've seen it, as you as the reporter have already seen it. How I did in the shoot. I think, um, I learned a lot. Something basic like zooming. I just, I mean, everyone assumes you can just zoom in and go, but you know, why not get closer with the camera like you are now and uh, shove it in their face? Be okay with that. Don't worry about that. Was that a problem for you, uh, getting in close? Yeah, I think I'm pretty British. I have a hard time shoving the camera in someone's face, and uh, probably I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the shots to be honest, so I'm not sure how great they are, and uh, I'm sure there'll be a bit, little bit of cursing in the editing booth. Hope my group members don't hate me that much. My name is Steve Fisher. I'm a video journalist with CBOT, the CBC local station in Ottawa. I've been a video journalist for two years now, and before that, for probably 10 or 12 years, I was your standard, regular old TV journalist. This is the... <clears throat> this is the second pedestrian fatality involving a young child in our region in the past three years. You go into it with an idea that I'm going to shoot this, this little sequence, this fairly standard little sequence, and then something happens, they meet somebody on the street, or, um, or something comes up in the middle of it, uh, and that makes for your best sequence. I'm going to put a wireless microphone on you, okay. and then we'll do a little walkthrough. Okay, sounds good. I don't like to set things up and uh, create um, sequences that aren't really there. and People can see through that. Okay. I usually, you know, chat up quite a bit with the person, what kind of visuals we might get and what they're up to. I, I try as much as I can not to set things up. Sticking their hand out. Okay. And it let's, also let's, let's do that for real. The process isn't group. entirely real in that you get them to stop and back up and do it again. It's always something we fight in television, trying to make it real, but I find creating a, a telling and true vi video sequence is often very hard. And often the best stuff you get is stuff that you uh, hadn't really scripted that just kind of happens. What a trip it will be. I did a story on um, a family that's sailing around the world a year ago and I caught up with them just as they were leaving Ottawa in their sailboat, a mother, father and, and three children. But I didn't have much to go on in terms of visuals. I arrived at the boat and, and was just kept my eyes open and at one point uh, uh, three people passing by uh, 
saw their boat, uh, were down at that dock having a picnic or something, and walked up and started talking to them. And I just started filming that. And for me, that was uh, one of the most interesting parts of the whole story. The Stumers and their boat have attracted a lot of questions along the way. The, your actuality in that case ended up providing you with some important journalism. Is it something you would want to do? Yes, of course, but uh, it's not in my uh, project now, but maybe later or never, I don't know. In TV, you, you do set up and you, and you get a lot of stuff that you kind of manufacture, your interviews and, and a lot of your uh, uh, sequences are, you know, at least partially manufactured, but if, if you keep your eyes open and if you spend enough time with people, a lot of it is just patience, you know. If you, if you hang out and if you film long enough, you're going to get much better stuff than anything you could have thought of. While I'll never be the same quality of shooter as some of our guys, I often have very distinctive, uh, a distinctive way I want to tell my story visually. At the end of the simulation, there's a coup. Different stories require different styles. I did a story last fall on the um, on people training uh, with the Red Cross at a resort up north to go off and do international aid work, and. Uh, a lot of that story was, uh, you know, they, much of that story I built around a, uh, a simulation that they created at this resort where it was taken over in a coup and, uh, and all these aid workers had to respond to that. The delegates may face great personal risk in their work. How they respond in situations like this could determine not only their own survival, but the survival of many others. Get up! Doing that um, in setup shots where you create sequences just wouldn't have cut it. In, in that case, it's you know, very lively, and they've got all these um, guys acting as gorillas uh, who have taken over this village, and they have to deal with it, so, so it's not pretty. Fall out of the double! I'm open the down! Uh, uh, uh. Here, they must decide if they will help a wounded soldier. Who wants to keep well, that you wanted to uh, give people the whole thing so that they don't feel uh, you're editing what they're viewing at all. Listen, we are a humanitarian organization. We cannot take weapons in the car. It works well to cut from a, a wide shot to a tight shot, but sometimes it's best to just leave in a wild zoom, and uh, it depends on the kind of story. I've done other stories. My, my sailing family, which I've covered several times, that I end up doing much more in sequences and, uh, sh and uh, specific shots. They will certainly have lots to write about. Diane has been commissioned to chronicle their adventure in the Ottawa Citizen. In that situation, you know, I said, well, let's, you know, I'll uh, catch you doing your next writing. She sits down in the boat and, uh, and I film that and, and do it all on locked off camera on tight shots, extreme tight of her. Uh, writing, you know, she's looking out over the ocean, and those are all on, all cut, cut together. But that worked best in that situation because she's, uh, you know, it, it's that kind of a sequence. But Diane's journals, which form the basis for a weekly article in the Ottawa Citizen, betray some doubts about the trip. Recently, she wrote that it's been more work than fun. No, I wouldn't say we're having second doubts or that it's ever seriously crossed our mind that this is not going to be fun. It's, it's been more a little bit of frustration that it has been as much work as it has been so far because uh, we haven't, it's been cold for one thing. Most of the time I, I vary my style. I just go with my gut instinct. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, I use a tripod throughout a whole story. I never take it off a tripod. Other times I, it, it's uh, never off my shoulder. It depends on the story and, and just your gut instincts of uh, uh, which works best. <laughs>